chance. Why? I got an opportunity. Why? God is blessing me. I'm going to take a moment and bless the name of the Lord. For God is good, not just some of the time, but it's good. Come on, come on. All the time, God is good. God is good. Amen. It's so good to see everyone that is here this morning. Everyone that is watching us via live stream, we bless God for you. And we thank you for tuning in and being with us this morning. We pray that you will be blessed by those things that are said. We thank God for all those that are visiting with us this morning. We pray God's blessings upon you and we pray and hope that you enjoy our services today and pray that you'll be blessed by it. Any of y'all just glad that God is good? Amen. 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 God is just good. God is just good. And that's enough for us to be excited about right there. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord this Amen. morning? Amen. 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 Let us be going to the book of Acts, chapter 15, and we're going to begin at verse number 36 and conclude at verse number 40. The grass withers and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Acts chapter 15, beginning at verse number 36. And the Bible says, sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with him. But Paul did not think it wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they had parted company. Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, dear Lord. Would you, if you would, pray with me. Father God in heaven is indeed, we are grateful. We're grateful, Master, first of all, because you have blessed us with another opportunity that we are to come and feast at the table of your word. Father, I ask that you would hide me behind Calvary's cross, that no flesh would take any glory in that that you ought to receive. Father, let somebody hear something on today that will cause them to ask what they need to do in order for their souls to be saved. And Father, if you do this for us, we'll be so ever mindful to give you glory for doing so. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Do me a favor this morning. Look at somebody to your left or to your right and just ask them a simple question. Are you ready to fight? Now, now, they, they laid their sword and they shield down by the riverside a long time ago and they thought they would study war no more. But I want you to ask somebody else this morning. Are you ready to fight? So one day... Peter is eating with him. The next day he wasn't. One day Peter was among and with the Gentiles. They say he wasn't. It depends on who wrote the letter, which way he responded. And it blew up in Antioch. Antioch was where the fan turned on and all things began to go crazy. And Paul is on his way to Antioch. But somewhere along the way, Barnabas' cousin had decided, I was with you in Jerusalem when it was all glamorous and all my friends could see me. But now that you're leaving outside of the Palestinian area and going into other regions of influence and thought, he disappeared away from them. He didn't backslide. He disappeared. He didn't resign. He just disappeared. He didn't give any reason for it. He just left. He just disappeared. So Paul takes Barnabas. John Mark has disappeared. And he goes into Antioch. And he goes into Antioch like you do when you're going into controversy. You know how you feel when you're going into controversy. And, and you're kind of caught because you don't know what's going to happen. And you don't really know how a thing is going to turn out. And he gets there. And there is one of the nastiest blowouts that he's ever seen. And, and, and it got so nasty, it got so violent that Paul and Peter got into a shouting match. I'm going to talk louder than you. I'm going to talk louder than you. They get into a shouting match and they began to just go crazy. And Paul got into Peter's face because Peter facilitated. In one moment, he was eating with the Gentiles, embracing them as legitimate yeah. brothers, yeah. endorsing that the blood of Jesus Christ had also brought them near and that it had also made them equal. 
And then when James comes along and starts to criticize him, he stops sitting with them, he stops eating with them, and he moves away. And Paul is on the short end of the fight because very few people agree with what Paul was saying. Very few people agree with Paul's way of thinking. Very good people agree with this. And Paul got up in Peter's face because their friendship was making Paul's life harder. Have you ever loved somebody who was making your life harder? I know they ain't talking about nobody here this morning. I know that there's no kind, there's no kind of fight like the fight that you will get in with somebody that you care about. But because what Paul was really saying is, Peter, you're making my life harder. Now because of your foolishness, Barnabas is questioning me too. And if it were not hard enough to me now, now I got to walk with a guy who is questioning my revelation. And you make my life harder, and I wanted you to make my life better. Have you ever wanted somebody to make something better, and instead of making it better, they end up making it worse? Word. And you think I had every right to expect better things from you, but because you were not as ready for the fight as you needed to be, as strong as you needed to be, loving you in a way is killing me. Come on now. And in the midst of this, now I want y'all to follow me this morning. Barnabas is with him, but Barnabas is kind of iffy. He's kind of shaky, okay? He's gotten into a fight with Peter and been all up in his face. And all of a sudden, John Mark, who was with them, has just disappeared. He has put his hand to the plow and looked back and walked back and went back. And we don't even know where he is. How many people started with you, but you don't even see them today? That's why you cannot build your life. Church, listen to me. That's why you cannot build your life around what people say. Because today they say Hosanna and tomorrow they'll say crucified. You can't count on people. Tell somebody you can't count on nobody. When it all boils down, you ain't got nobody but Jesus. I'm talking about when all things have fallen apart in your life, you ain't got nobody but Jesus. I'm talking about when you got sickness in your body, you ain't got nobody but Jesus. If you are down on your luck, you ain't got nobody but Jesus. But by verse number 36, the Bible says, after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Now Barnabas, I told you Barnabas has already got a little attitude, wanted to take with them John called Mark. But Paul says he thought it best not to take him with them since he had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia. Now he said, this is no time to take a quitter with us. <laughs> He says it's too thick in here to be fooling with somebody that's shaky, somebody that don't really know what they want. I can't pick somebody that's not ready to fight. I don't know what's going to happen next. I can't lean on somebody that I don't know if they're, they're going to lead me into a foxhole. John Mark is good. I know he's your cousin and everything, and his mama sent a big love offering, but leave John Mark at home because his mama, because he left us in Pamphylia, he might leave us again. John Mark was not ready to fight. Ask your neighbor this morning, are you ready to fight? So it says, but Paul thought it best not to take with them one that had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to do the work. Didn't go to the work fit for the fun, but was it down for the work? Anybody know anybody this morning that's always ready for the fun but don't want to do no work? You ever met people that'll show up when it's time to eat but you don't see them when it's time to knock on doors? I'm talking about people that are ready for fun but people that are not ready to do any kind of work. I want to eat the bread, but I don't want to grind the meal. Come on, somebody. I want to have a husband, but I don't want to cook. Amen, somebody. I want to have a wife, but I don't want to provide. Amen, somebody. I want to have this and that, but I don't want to do what's necessary in order for me to have it. Amen, 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 amen. I want success, but I don't want to sacrifice. 
I want the championship. I want the trophy, but I don't want to put no sweat. I don't want to put no sweat in the guy. He said, I can't take nobody with me that's like that. He said he's not ready for the fight. And there arose a sharp disagreement, the Bible says. They're already on edge. You know how you got somebody with you and you already kind of mark them because you've already seen they kind of shake a little bit when things get rough. And now the, as push has come to shove and things have come to a head and John Mark is just the underbelly of the conflict that was already pre-existing. And, and, and so a sharp argument, the Bible says, arose and they shouldn't have got this mad about this, but when there's an undercurrent, it, has the, it was just a straw that decided to break the camel's back. There was a disagreement that rose up against him that was so strong that they separated from each other. This is pain for church. They separated from each other, and when they separated from each other, the Bible says that Barnabas took Mark with him. He said, you don't want to take him, I'll take him, and he took Mark with him. And they sailed away into Cyprus. They, they must have fell off the boat or something because you don't hear too much about anything mighty happening down in Cyprus or anywhere else that Barnabas and John Mark, because John Mark was not ready to fight. Paul chose Silas. Didn't he choose Silas? Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. He left with Silas. You remember Silas, 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 Silas would have been locked in jail. Lord, help Paul if he would have took John Mark to jail with him. <laughs> Just think about that. Amen. Paul knew who he needed to go to jail with. Just imagine. If he would have took John Mark to jail with him, you remember the, te the text that I'm going through now. The Bible says, and at midnight, yeah. Paul and Silas prayed and gave thanks unto God. And suddenly there was the sound and the shaking of the down from heaven. If Paul would have went to jail with John Mark, they would have died in prison. Because John Mark was not ready to fight. But when he got, uh, when he got into a fight with Silas, Silas said, you know what? This is how we're going to win this thing. You're going to sing and I'm going to pray. When you get tired, you're going to pray and I'm going to sing. I know we, how we're going to get out of this situation. And I don't know about y'all, but when I find myself in a locked up situation in life, when I find myself with my back up against the wall, I need somebody around me that can encourage me in the word of the Lord. I don't need no Nobody telling me what well, child it do look bad it don't look like it's gonna get any better don't look like anything is gonna change I need somebody that can stand upon the word of God and say with his stripe you are already here he was wounded for your transgression bruised for your iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripe I'm here I need somebody to remember the word of the Lord And John Mark, John Mark would have got Paul killed in jail because he was not ready to fight. Tell somebody this morning, look at somebody, just say, work with me, work with me, work with me. We're, we're in a fight now. We're in a fight now. We're in a fight. Work when we're in a fight. And I want to know, are you ready for the fight this morning? Now understand, now understand, this is the only requirement. He didn't have to know karate. He didn't have to know taijutsu. He didn't even have to know how to be able to box. He had to be able to stand. He had to be able to stand. That was the only requirement. Having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, in the middle of loneliness, you got to learn how to stand. In the middle of an attack church, you got to learn how to stand. In the middle of disappointment, you got to learn how to stand. In the middle of being pulled this way and that way, Lord, you got to learn how to stand. With the wind blowing, with the rain falling, you got to learn how to stand. So, I honestly believe this for this morning because I want you to understand, you don't have to backslide in order to quit. The, the way we think of backsliding, it may not be the, the alluring temptation of lust and, and degradation that makes you drop your hands. It could just be that you got tired. It could be that you got tired. You ever got tired? Anybody ever got tired this morning? You ever got tired about something and you just threw in the towel, you were just so ready to quit? You know, I found something about tired. It's funny. It's funny. Tired 
will always reign if it goes unchallenged. Time will always reign if it goes unchallenged. Sometimes you got to challenge time. I'm not saying you ought not go to bed and normal stuff, things that God said. I'm not talking about the tide that sleep will fix. I'm talking about being weary in your way of doing. I'm talking about how you can show up and still be missing. I'm talking about how you can be there and not be present. And people don't know that in your heart, just like John Mark, you're gone. And when you go away, other people get what should have been yours. They step in and they receive what by all rights should have been yours. And then what you have to do, this is what you have to do. Either you lie to yourself and get bitter and blame everybody else for your own weaknesses or you strengthen yourself. The reason I said tired reigns when it's not unchallenged is because when you start working out, just say you're going to a gym, the first sign of not being fit is how tired you get. But if you keep working out, the point that used to wear you out, you'll be able to push past that. It don't even bother you anymore. You can pick that thing up like it ain't nothing. And the more you get into shape, the more you can run. And you won't even get windy where you used to get windy because you're getting fit. You're making yourself ready. You can tell you're fit by the speed of your exhaustion. The more you're able to endure, the more you are fit and ready for the fight. Yeah. Now fast forward. Paul is now an old man. He's in a jail cell, and he's writing to Timothy. He's in the final hours of his life. He's matured, and his season is now coming to an end. He says, Timothy, he says, Alexander the coppersmith has done me much evil. May the Lord reward him for what he has done. He says, Timothy, I fought a good fight. I fought all the way down. I finished my course. Now laid up for me is a crown of righteousness. He said, Timothy, when you come, bring me a coat. Because it's a little cold in this jail cell. And bring me some paper because I got to keep writing them down to the last drops. And then almost at the end of the chapter, he tells Timothy, when you come, bring John Mark with you. When you come, bring John Mark with you. He says, because John Mark is profitable to my ministry. Good God Almighty. He said, because he is profitable to my ministry. Church, my takeaway point is this. Don't ever throw anybody completely away. Don't ever count anybody completely out. Just because they're not fit now doesn't mean they won't be fit later. Paul is now seeing something. He's aged. He's gotten mature. He's gotten strong enough to say no when he needs to say no. But he was not malicious. He didn't become hateful. He wasn't vindictive. He said, go get John, Mark. John, you let me down. But you've grown since then. You ran away from stuff. Left me in a mess by myself. But you've grown from that now. You didn't keep your word. And you didn't manage your responsibility. You caused me trouble that I would have never gone through if it wasn't for you. But you've grown from that now. You've gone from unprofitable, having nothing left, to being profitable. Being strong enough to have reserve. You're profitable unto me and my ministry. And most scholars believe that the gospel of St. Mark was written by John Mark. Isn't it amazing that something, that somebody who could cause such a mess could make a turnaround and write a gospel for the Lord? Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? Just look at somebody and say, this ain't the last place you're going to see me. This ain't the last place you're going to see me. 
Don't make the mistake of counting people out where you see them. Don't make the mistake of just because a person made the decision that that decision defines the rest of their life. We serve a God that is in the business of cleaning people up. We serve a God that is in the business of making people new. We serve a God that is in the business of taking your feet out of the miry clay and setting your feet on a rock to stand. We serve a God that will man puts a period and says that it is over with God can insert a comma and say I'm just now getting started on this individual they are still a work that is in my hand don't discount me where you last saw me because where you last saw me is not where I'm gonna end up eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither had it entered into the heart of man the thing that God got prepared for them that love him Isn't it amazing that somebody could make such a mess and then God could clean them up and use them for his glory. Can I tell you this one? I don't care where you have been. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you done got involved in. You are never too messed up that God cannot clean you up. You are never too down that God cannot reach down and pick you up out of your situation. Just say, hear my Lord. You did blow it. You did disappoint God. Not just God, you disappointed your family and other people. He said, you really let me down. But I have not forgotten about you. Thank you, Lord. So, I came this morning to get John Mark. Where are you, John? Come on, now. Come on. Come on. Where are you, John Mark? Where are you? Tell, I came to tell John Mark that though you were weak in the middle, you're going to finish strong. You're going to finish strong. Even there may be someone here this morning that when testing time came, you didn't have what it took to stand. When it was really important, you weren't ready for the fight. But I came this morning to tell you that John Mark, you can come to Jesus. Amen. Paul says, I cannot leave till I tell John Mark who he really is. Yeah. I can't leave here until I tell him who he really is in God. I cannot go until I tell John Mark, come to Jesus. Yes. Come to Jesus. Go and get John Mark. You blew it. You hurt God, but God is not finished with you yet. Amen. I believe, church, that maybe even this morning there's a John Mark in our midst today. Amen. You weren't able to stand under the pressure. Life got tough, and you ran. Even now, you're running around in circles, trying to get away from your circumstances trying to get away from life situations. But the minute you stop running, you'll recognize that it's just as close as it ever was. John Mark, John Mark, just because it got tough don't mean that you should have threw in the towel. Don't mean that you were supposed to give up, but even though you made that choice, even though you made that decision, I still welcome you. Even though you made that decision, even though you fell by the wayside, even though you at one time had your hands on the plow, but you look back and you fell by the wayside, I am not going to forget about you. And I believe there are at least two or three people in this place this morning that can identify and thank God that he did not leave you out beside the road, that he did not leave you in the gutter, that he did not leave you in the trenches, but he came out to where you were and he picked you up and he gave you a brand new start and ever since then you can say and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own and the joy that we share as we tarry there none other has ever known Amen. and he's going to continue to walk with you 
because every single one of us got a little John Mark on the inside of us. That when things get tough, we want to get to running. When things are not turning out the way that we thought they were going to turn out, we want to tuck our tails and run for the next best thing. But God says, no, no, no. Don't, no, don't, don't feel bad just because you made that choice, okay? You recognize the choice was bad. Now I want you to come back to me. And isn't it amazing how the very people we say aren't worthy, God uses them for his glory. God takes an individual out of their condition, cleanses them in his blood, and he makes them brand new. He gives them a brand new life. He gives them a brand new start. Now, whether you fall by the wayside, that's your problem. That's your choice that you make along life. But God will give you a brand new start. Can I tell you, church, that the Bible says that if any man be in Christ, that he is a new creature, that old things are passed away and all things become new. God takes all the mistakes of your past, all the mistakes of your present, all the things that you have done. God forgets about them. He throws them into the sea of forgiveness. They don't rise against you in this this life and neither the life that is to come and God is there for you in your time of need church where you at Jeremiah even today God is waiting on you you may have said well preacher I've been here I've been there I've done X I've done Y and I've done Z guess what you ain't the only one there are others that have been in the same condition that you are in some that have been in worse conditions, but people that have been there. I believe there are some people that here could testify with you this morning and say, God did more than I ever expected. You can say this morning. And any of y'all, can you just take a second and just look back at a place where you were? In a rut. In the hog pen of life. And look at where God has you today. And if he can do it in your life. Surely he can do it for somebody else. Are you ready? Are you ready to fight for the Lord? I know they told you that when you came here, it was time to lay down your, your sword and shield down by the riverside. But children of God, we're going to war. Every day of our life, we are at war. We are in battle with the devil every single day of our lives. Every day. You got to go to war for your family. Your family is in trouble. You got to go to war for your children. You got to pray for your children. Your children are in trouble. You got to go to war. You got problems on your job. Go to war. Get down on your knee because you cannot solve supernatural problems with natural too. You got to go down on your knee in the face of God. Lay your cares. Lay your burden down at his feet and trust him to do something about it. For he is able. He's able to do anything but fail. So John Mark, I know you out there this morning. Wherever you are in life, God is waiting on you this morning. He's waiting on you. The reason he has not condemned you in your present condition is because he's waiting on you. Wake up, man. Wake up, sister. Get it right. Get it right. You know what you need to do. You know the decision that you need to make. Stop playing with life, acting like you got all the time in this world, acting like you got all the days and years that you need to get everything right. The Bible said we know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear you got to do what you need to do today you got to make the right decision today you got to choose Jesus today tomorrow may not be promised church make your decision today why do you stand halted between two opinions who you gonna choose is it gonna be Jesus or well, you're just going to hold on to the things down here. My Bible tells me that we ought to lay not up for ourselves treasures on earth where moth and dust doth corrupt and thieves break through and steal. But rather lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven 
where moth nor dust doth corrupt, nor thieves break through and steal. Get ready, church. Get ready. And can I tell any Body that may be here that's aspiring to be a child of God. If you're thinking that this thing is just going to be a crystal stair and an easy road, you're making the wrong choice. Amen. You're going to be at war. You think you're fighting right now. He's just messing with you to keep your attention. You're already in his hands. But when you say, for God I live and for God I'm willing to die. When you say, I'm selling myself out for Jesus to do his will and to work for his glory, he's coming after you. He's going to throw everything in his repertoire at you to get you down, to make you doubt God, to make you denounce the faith in Jesus Christ that you have. But having done all to stand. Stand, therefore. My brother, my sister, maybe you're here today. And you are John Mark. You find yourself in opposition of God. You find yourself on the wrong side of the track. God is waiting on you this morning. Don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. God gave you this day. God gave you this opportunity to make the decision, to make the choice that you need today. Why put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow? How many of us know that we're gonna be here next Sunday? How many of you know that you can make it to a Sunday evening service? You do not know. So why you have this opportunity? If you are not saved, get saved today. If you are in sin, get your sins forgiven today. Come by here and believe and repent. Confessing your sins. Being baptized in the watery grave of baptism. Living faithful unto death. And you'll receive a crown of life that will never fade away. If you stand in the need of prayer, come let us pray for you. Don't leave here knowing that you need Jesus. You can do it as together we stand and sing the song Jesus of invitation. Jesus with all power in his hand. they tell me that he rose with all power in his hand. Well, in his hand. They tell me that he died on Friday evening. But he rose on Sunday From glory, well, and they rose on a way. They tell me that the angels came down from glory, yes, and they rose on a way. They tell me that the angels came down from glory, but he rose on a way. My Jesus rose with all power. My Jesus rose. Sunday morning, well, and it was just before the break of day. They tell me that he rose on Sunday. Yeah, Lord, and it was just before the break of day. They tell me that he rose on Sunday. Oh, and you know that it was just before the break of day. 
Mighty Lord of Lord, with the power in his well in Yeah, they tell me that he rose with all, all in his hands. Well, oh, they tell me that he rose, yeah, Lord, all in his cities in his hands. They tell me that he died. And he rose. He said, My Jesus rose. He my Jesus rose. Oh, my Jesus rose. Yeah, holiness. Yeah, it is. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. We want to thank Brother Peterson for yeah, that yeah, very God. timely message. Yeah. Where, uh, when well you said ready to fight, you could have named it also. Where is John? Yes. <laughs> well, we're grateful. Appreciate it so much. Uh, good to see each of you. And we have two precious souls. Sister Tracy Jefferson, we all know her. God bless. Tracy, uh, 